Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I rise today on behalf of rural America. All of Montana is rural America, and despite good intentions, rural America too often gets overlooked when we pass things here in the Senate. That's what happened when this body passed an amendment limiting debit card interchange fees last year. It was an attempt to address a problem. But like people on both sides of the aisle, I voted against it. I knew it was a mistake because it had unintended consequences that will hurt rural America. It's a mistake now. Since we took that vote, the regulators have said that small issuer exemptions for banks and credit unions with assets of less than $10 billion, which is what that amendment said, the reason why many members supported this amendment simply won't work. In a banking committee hearing back in February, Chairman Bernanke said, and I quote, we are not certain how effective that exemption will be. There is some risk that that exemption will not be effective and that interchange fees available through smaller institutions will be reduced to the same extent that we would see for larger banks. At that same hearing, FDIC Chairman, Chairwoman Sheila Baer said, I think it remains to be seen whether they can be protected with this, the small banks being they, and credit unions. I think they're going to have to make, up that, make it up somewhere, probably by raising fees that they have on transaction accounts. The acting controller of the currency has said that the Fed's proposed rules have, quote, long-term safety and soundness consequences for banks of all sizes that are, not in that are not compelled by the statute. The regulators who have been tasked with implementing these rules have said that they simply cannot guarantee that small issuers can be exempted from these rules, small issuers being community banks and credit unions. Market forces will drive down rates for community banks and credit unions that are supposed to be exempt from these rules. A lot of my colleagues, Republicans and Democrats, agree. Fortunately, having the opportunity to fix things, and I'm asking for your help to apply the brakes, so that we can stop the unintended consequences that come with allowing the federal government to set the price of swipe fees on debit cards. Just this morning, someone asked me, why is a farmer from Montana leading the charge on an issue like this? Well, Mr. President, it's simple, really. I'm not in this fight for the big banks. I don't think these rules are going to help the consumers one lick. The cost of a hamburger isn't going down to by a few cents if, if, if this is enacted. And there are no assurances that retailers would pass the savings on to consumers. Let's just say there's a reason that Walmart is dumping a ton of money to fight against this. I'm stepping into the middle of this fight because when government sets prices on debit card swipe fees, it's the little guys who get hurt. Rural America pays the price. Community banks and credit unions get socked. We can't afford to let that happen, and we can prevent it. Community banks and credit unions are a critical part of America's economic infrastructure. Without them, small businesses and family farms and ranches in America would go by the wayside. When farmers and ranchers need to invest in a new piece of equipment or buy feed or diesel fuel, who do they turn to? They turn to their community banks and credit unions. Organizations like the Stockman's Bank, the Missoula Federal Credit Union, First Interstate Bank, Yellowstone Bank, the list goes on and on. And America's community banks and credit unions are the backbone of our small businesses. These financial institutions are the ones that help small businesses grow, help small businesses create jobs, and help keep rural America growing not the Wall Street banks. These rules do not allow community banks and credit unions to cover the legitimate costs associated with debit transactions. These are guys who simply don't have the means to eat the costs of debit card fees that are limited by the federal government. And they don't have the volume to make up this revenue elsewhere like the big guys do. For community banks and credit unions, this rule will only add to banking costs, and it's going to prevent community banks and credit unions from being being able to compete with the big guys. And if they can't compete with debit products, they will lose customers. It will also limit the use of debit, pushing for folks towards credit instead. And already, 
Community banks are talking about limiting debit cards to 50 or 100 bucks, or ending free checking, or adding new fees to ATM withdrawals, measures that will, in the end, cost customers. This rule will further consolidate the financial industry, and that's really the last thing we need in this country. But in rural America, financial consolidation, what that means is community banks and credit unions will have to compete with Wall Street with one hand tied behind their back. Not only will that hurt Montana's farmers and ranchers and small businesses, not only will that hurt the ability for rural communities to create jobs, rural businesses to create jobs, it could result, and I think it will result, in community banks going out of business altogether. The same is true with credit unions. That's not what anyone would call reasonable and proportional. Yes, there's supposed to be a carve-out in this rule for community banks and credit unions, but both Chairman Bernanke, Chairwoman Bear, tell us that this exemption simply will not work. But only in Washington will you get criticized for trying to make sure that legislation actually does what it's supposed to do. Only in Washington does, it mean, does this mean that you're trying to kill the bill. Some have said that this means billions in interchange fees that multi-million dollar box stores will have to pay. But truly, these rules are going to put community banks and credit unions out of business, the same institutions that are the lifeblood of rural America. It's a fact that the folks that are going to be hurt, the bottom line with this is going to be the small businesses, the community banks, the credit unions, not the big box retailers. That's why Senator Corker and I and a whole bunch of colleagues on both sides of the aisle introduced a bill to stop this rule and take a closer look at the unintended consequences. Let's slow, let's slow down. Let's study the issue. Let's find a thoughtful and careful solution. If we do that, we will see, if we don't do that, we will see our critical community banking infrastructure disappear. This, is, uh, this issue is not about picking sides. It's about making sure that we don't trample on a financial infrastructure that rural America needs to stay in business. Mr. President, I ask my colleagues for their bipartisan support on a responsible bipartisan bill. Our economy cannot afford to let this rule go into effect until we study its impacts, both intended and unintended. With that, I yield the floor. Request the absolute.